Okay, good morning guys. It is day two of me riding this beast. And when I first got it, it was like a little wild Mustang. It didn't want to be ridden <laughs> at all. Yeah, that's a pretty big understatement, but let's get into that now in a little bit more detail. Hey guys, what's up? I'm AJ, aka The Honest Biker. As many of you will know, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm gonna be going over some pros and some cons of the Tiger Rally Pro 1200 edition from Triumph, which I was kindly loaned by Triumph UK. So thank you so much, guys. I had an amazing time at ABR. Um, if you guys don't know what ABR is, I'll put a link in the description right here. Um, I'm getting pretty good at doing things like that now. I'm not too bad at doing some edits and things like that, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna cut this video right down. But anyway, let's get straight into it. The Tiger Rally Pro 1200 is definitely not a beginner's bike, and I don't really like saying things like that, but you do have to have your wits about you with this bike. It's a fantastic bike when it's going along, but you do need a certain set of skills to be able to control and move the bike around confidently on cambers, uneven ground, things like that. It's very, very capable, but just a little bit misunderstood. As I found out when I first got the bike, my God, the size of the thing, it was literally like a small horse. I was as equally excited as I was intimidated by it, but having this bike really kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone. And I'm really appreciative that I was given the bike to do it. Otherwise I don't actually think I would have not dared to take a bike out like that but you know not it wouldn't have been something that I would have gone for originally so I'm so glad that I was kind of pushed out of my comfort zone and given a taste of an adventure bike and what I was actually able and capable of doing because I'm a really good cheerleader for my friends um, but not so much for myself and I think that's something we can all kind of relate to right Tell me if I'm wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is that something that we all kind of do? We're all kind of a little bit of our own worst enemy, our own worst critic. But anyway, I digress. Going back to what I was saying about the Rally Pro. When this bike first arrived, there was a lot of bells and whistles and I didn't really take the time to look into it properly and probably should have done a little bit of research and had a little bit of a look online to see what kind of bike I was getting and what I was getting myself into. And by the time that the bike arrived and it was ready for me to go, it was very last minute, I packed everything up and the first thing I immediately realised that this bike is very top heavy. It's almost kind of like it wants to this is your balance point and this is the rest of the bike and all he wants to do is just do that. So with everything that was packed on top, it was just a little bit too top heavy and I kind of struggled with that a little bit. I'm not ashamed to admit that. It's not something that I'm, you know, I don't have a bravado or anything. If I'm struggling with something, I'm going to say, you know, yeah, I did. I struggled with this a little bit and uh, it was a little bit of a challenge. However, Less than 24 hours later, my friend and I had managed to find a video online, which I am actually going to create my own. It's gonna be a very quick three to five minute video of how to lower the comfort level, as in the actual lowering of the suspension and the, the you know, the, the cushioning and all of that inside the bike, and also the dampening. So I don't know why they just don't say height adjustment or height, you know, adjust height, it's, you've got to go into so many different settings and then go back and forth and back and forth and check that the ABS is back on and all these other things. And it was very kind of complex for something if you don't really know what you're doing um, or you've never done it before, which was certainly the case with myself. And um, yeah, it was just one of those things that, thank God we found it because it made such a difference. Um, I'm not gonna break into spontaneous song. I mean, I normally do. What a difference a day makes. 24 little hours but yeah you know anyway something like that also before i forget when i was at the abr festival no less than five six guys came up to me and i say guys because they were all guys men right and they all came up to me and this wasn't from like a sexist point of view because i was a, I, was, I say i'm a petite girl i'm a slim girl on a big bike and they came over and they were genuinely interested and said how are you getting on with that bike because I have that bike and I hate it. And I was like, why, 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 like, why do you hate it? And they said, because it's too tall. Every single one of them said, it's too tall. Then I came in with the secret, I've got the key, I've got the secret. All right, stop, right, okay, anyway. <laughs> so we went over to one of the guys and changed all the settings like we did on mine. And the guy 
was so appreciative. He said it was like night and day. He could get both his feet on the ground. He had so much more confidence and yeah, just little things like that, you know? It's, it's really good to have that kind of feedback and send that to companies and say to them, look, this isn't a problem that is a small scale. It's a, it's a large scale. Five people came up to me with the same bike and asked me, how am I getting on? Genuinely, not because I'm a girl, but because of them having the same issue and struggling with really hard suspension, unforgiving suspension, and it just makes the bike not enjoyable to ride, which is a shame because it's a good bike. So yeah, I just needed to add in that a little bit. I'll just put my hands away. <laughs> This was my first ever kind of adventure bike experience. So I'm kind of looking forward to looking at some more. I understand that it's in competition with the GS, right? It was nicknamed the GS Destroyer or something like that. Um, again, I'm a cruiser girl. My, my bike is a cruiser. So, you know, totally different styles of bikes. But anyway, moving on, here is my little review. So let me know what you think in the comments. Be really interested to hear your feedback. And obviously if anyone is interested in that video, please click the like, share and subscribe button and the little notification because you'll soon be told as soon as I put up those instructions on how to solve the Krypton Factor maze. I mean, how to set the settings on the Tiger Triumph Rally Pro. Okay, thanks guys, bye. Now that we've managed to lower the suspension, etc., I can very comfortably get at least both the balls of my feet on the floor and I can get one foot on the floor comfortably when I lean. It's still a little bit of an effort, so I'll be honest, it's not, I know I don't like saying this, but it's not a beginner's bike. You do kind of have to be confident with biking already so that you can concentrate on other stuff. But all in all, now that we've managed to lower the suspension and it's a lot softer, like yesterday, I felt like I was trying to ride, God knows, I don't know, a camel. <laughs> it was all like, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ever, like, you know. But now, this is like set up where I would want it. Okay, so let's get into it. So let's get my foot off, kickstand up. Hoi! So I've got one foot on the floor flat now. I don't normally like to have one foot, like my right foot, I like to have my left foot and the back brake covered, which I can do on tippy toes but I do prefer to have a flat foot. So anyway, to start the bike, clutch in, turn it on. So the key is in my pocket, it's keyless. I've turned it to green. There we go, there's the Tiger. It's a little bit dusty. There, okay? So it's just doing all of its check-in, it's fine. So then you have to do this one to start, I think. It's in neutral and we're good to go. So I can turn it on, start again. There we go. So now we're good to go. So my friend is just moving his bike, bless him, because a massive truck decided to come in this morning. So yeah, so I can comfortably now get my foot on the ground, which is so much better. It's, it's not great, um, but it's a lot better than it was. I couldn't, I couldn't stop with one foot on the ground yesterday. I was literally on my tippy toes to the point of doing like Michael Jackson's The Moonwalk, <laughs> which um, yeah, wasn't, wasn't that great, but we're off to ABR. I'm gonna put my visor down if I can find it. There we go. So I'm packed up, I'm ready to go. I've got my sticker on, I've got my band on. Um, we're just going to wait for my mate to do the do the honours. I have had to transfer across my camp cot and my chair because of the weight distribution. I think next time, if I'm taking out a bike, especially if I'm going camping to do a review, 100% I've got to have panniers because if if I top load a top heavy bike, it's just it's just not going to be happy. So. Yeah, that's just, you know, that's just something you learn, I suppose. Yeah. You good? Yeah, we're all good to go. I'm following you. And off we go. So we're going to go right here. So I'm just going to go nice and slow around here because I can't see what's around the corner. There we go. Right, so I need to relax because I feel like I'm a little bit tense this morning. But I think that's also because... I wasn't really looking forward to riding this bike, if I'm completely honest. 
given how I was yesterday. Um, but yeah, now that I'm a lot more confident with it, and you know what as well, my back was absolutely killing me. Like my lower back was really uncomfortable yesterday. Um, but now that I seem to have managed to sort out, good morning. Now that I seem to have managed to sort out the positioning of this bike, it feels a lot, a lot better. I keep forgetting that it's got a quick shifter as well. So you don't always have to use the clutch, but I think where on my bike, I'm so used to doing it. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm concentrating as I'm riding at the same time. But um, yeah. Oh, this is, do you know what? This is so much better. So much better. So basically what we've done, I don't know if you can hear me because this bike is quite loud, is we've completely lowered the comfort like right the way down to the lowest level. We've completely changed the suspension again to the lowest level and I can now touch, yeah, I can touch the floor if I put my feet down. So that's given me a lot more confidence. And now this is very similar in height to the Harley Pan. But um, yeah, I test rode that last year at ABR. So this year, uh, I should, honestly, <laughs> I'm laughing at myself because this is really important guys. You must do your research or at least have some kind of um, talk with the dealership that you're taking your bike out with on the modes and the settings, especially this. It's got, I can't like, it's got so many bells and whistles and buttons and all sorts and it's just kind of like, like honestly you do kind of need some kind of um, rocket science degree so I'm going a little bit careful on this bike because um, it's well it just it's got a very big front wheel and I'm not it's a little bit cold this morning so I'm not gonna throw it into the corners too much plus I've got my luggage but yeah it's um it's a good it's a good bike now that I've <laughs> now that I've figured out my comfort cheese honestly like I can feel the difference already like my center of gravity is so different so for anyone who's wondering or well, for anyone who doesn't know because I do mention it quite a lot I'm five foot seven and I have um, an inside leg of around 30 to 31 inches so I'm quite lucky in that I can flat foot most bikes but um, yeah, honestly, what a, what, a, what a difference, what a difference. So this is my, my review is more kind of like a, you know, an average Joe review. Um, I tend to talk about as if, you know, you're a person that's just in the market to buy a bike. You might not know too much about bikes, not saying that, you know, you're thick or anything like that. Just that it's, you know, you want to know is the bike comfortable can you handle it if it's if it's heavy i'm still used to this as well this is the thing i keep getting confused between the menu toggle and the indicator toggle so that is one thing as well that i have noticed is that it um there we go sorry road yeah that is one thing i have noticed is that i do keep hitting the indicator quite a lot uh, the menu button so I don't know if people are just gonna be like oh you know typical bikes and the only thing I find as well is that this is like right in my eye line so I'm just gonna try and there we go oh that's quite a lot of wind but now I feel like it's not in my eye line because I, I think the screen only goes as high as that and then that is literally on my eye line so there we go, just down a little bit. So apologies if this is now a little bit windy. There we go, I just use that quick shifter, which does help with my hands, because I get RSI as well. And on my old um, 
bike I have a, a throttle assist like a little paddle and it really helps I'll put a picture in the description uh, in the video and uh, yeah I can't believe the difference I can't believe the difference honestly what an absolute but it looks like we're gonna have good weather oh tractor slowing down slowing down slowing down slowing down so it gives you plenty of room mate there we go so the thing is oh and a horse trailer so the thing is as well with this camera that i've got on i've got like a fisheye lens on and um yeah i've got a fisheye lens on so it makes things seem a lot further away than they actually are oh got my indicator on still see i've pressed this thinking it's the indicator and it's not it's there but on some places you have the indicators on the wing mirrors <coughs> which would be really helpful but not on here oh friend another little friend friend I'm gonna try and like just keep rolling. Keep rolling, 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 hook. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Come on. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Please go all green. Yeah, it's gone green. Hooray. So I can pull it out. This is what I normally do, even if I'm in my car, because it saves time. Instead of everyone getting up to the lights and then crossing over. Whoops. Drain cover. Nice. Quick shifter again. There you go. So the only thing I found with this, which I found on another review, is that I don't know why. I'll avoid that drain cover. But um, this bike really dips quite a bit when um, it brakes like at the front so I do mainly 80% rear brake and then the, I make up the rest with the front brake and then it's like yeah but it, it really really dipped but I think I think now that we've changed the mode I reckon that it, that's where it was I think it was the mode that was uh let's just say thank you thank you oh she didn't seem happy did she but yeah, I think it was the mode that was um, <laughs> always wave to the kiddies. That makes me sound a bit dodgy, doesn't it? Thank you. Sorry, I've gone off track. What was I going to say? Oh yeah, so always wave to the kiddies and, you know, because inspiring the next generation and stuff. But anyway, ever since we've changed the mode, it doesn't want to dip on me at all so that's really good no need to break no need to break clear road let's go there we go there's that quick shifter again and it's definitely got some beans which is nice yeah quite comfortably this says 52 on the speedometer which on a um a gps like kind of um, mode you know on your sat nav it would say around 50 so it's always about two or three miles per hour out it's actually now a very comfortable bike i can't believe it oh dear so as you can see guys i actually ended up getting on with this bike pretty well and i did give it a rough time when i first started out but here's one of the main benefits look how easy it is to overtake before anyone does say anything I did go over the speed limit however I was making progress which is allowed as long as you pull back in and drop back down to the speed limit
So all in all, my review on the Tiger Rally Pro 1200 is that it isn't a bad bike. It's just kind of misunderstood. And once you've kind of got your head wrapped around all of the menu and the settings and the toggles and the buttons, it's really not a bad bike. However, you do need to do your research. And as always, I strongly recommend you go down to your local dealership and do a test ride, sit on the bike, see if it's for you, because obviously, Bikes are like chocolates and you never really know what you're gonna get until you go in and you open the box and maybe give it a little nibble. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching my videos. If you'd like to see more about this or any other bikes that I'm looking forward to reviewing, please click the like and subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you guys again in the future. Also, I forgot to say that whilst I... Blah, blah, blah. This is why we write a script. <laughs>